Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I've got what I think most people would just skip over as a video, and that's fine. I just wanted to put this information out there, if anything, for myself. Um, but maybe someone will find this useful. So, I, I see a lot of videos and a lot of people talking about, you know, I'll buy a booster box for $60, I'll pull $60 worth of cards, and I've made my money back. Um... And in a sense, yes, you have the cards. If you wanted to buy them, would probably cost you sixty dollars. But if you want to sell them, you're you did not make your money back if you want to sell them. So I understand there's two different contexts, and usually um, the presumption is that they're not going to resell the cards and that they're just going to keep the cards. However, the presumption of reselling is what we're talking about here today. We're talking about if you bought a box and pulled sixty dollars worth of cards in order for you to sell those cards and get your money back you need to sell them for a lot more than sixty and i just kinda wanted to talk about you know considerations of becoming a reseller you know so it, it's a lot more difficult but it is quite lucrative um, than people understand it's it's mostly just for fun. I I don't think anyone should really consider doing this as like their job. It's um it, it's very difficult. I understand people do do it full time. You know, Troll and Toad obviously exists, and people on eBay um, sell buy and sell collections and resell them all the time, and, and they make a lot of their income from that. I understand that's a possibility, but it's very difficult to get to that point. And you should really just consider doing it for fun. It's really no secret that you can, um, you know, buy these collections generally at a pretty large discount, keep what you want and resell what you don't want, and try to kind of build your collection for relatively cheap. It's a lot cheaper than just going out and buying the cards, um, buying the single cards. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to break down the different ways people generally sell their cards. So usually people sell their cards online. Now obviously if you can sell them off platform is what I'll call it, you know, directly peer to peer um, through PayPal goods and services or, or locally, that is absolutely the best option. The most off, the, the more off the books you can make it, the more money in your pocket. All these platforms, as we see, we will see have large fees associated with them. Um, so, sorry if this isn't your video, you you can click off, you can dislike, I won't be offended. I'm just making this because this is what I enjoy to make. Um, so we're going to talk about the big three. Uh, TCG player, eBay, and I guess Amazon. Um, Amazon does exist, and people <laughs> people do um, sell things on there. I'm not really sure why. After looking up their fee schedule, it's quite ridiculous. So I'm going to talk about eBay first because I'm more familiar. And I'm sorry, I I couldn't really think of a better way to present this information than just in a boring PowerPoint. So that's what you're going to see. It's like you're in class again. Um, so eBay, pretty simple. 10%, they're, they're going to take 10% if you uh, buy a card. If you sell a card for $100, they're going to take $10. That is steep, and it sucks, and I know. Um, then you got to process the transaction. Um, PayPal is going to take 2.9% and $0.30 cent, um, flat fee also. Uh, so that also sucks. <laughs> so you're looking at like 13 cents plus 13% of your sale price plus 30 cents from a flat fee. So it's it's tough. Um, the eBay also has a benefit of of giving you 25% discount for shipping labels if you ship through eBay. You know, um, a lot of times people just slap a stamp on something, so this doesn't really apply. But on larger items where you want to buy tracking or signature confirmation, you do get a discount, so that is nice. Um, so TCG Player, I'm much less familiar with it. I, I've only sold very infrequently on TCG Player just because I've always done eBay. You know, um, TCG Player overall will take less of your money. They have a higher final sale value, but their pay, their payment processing, which I'll just call PayPal, I, it, it's not always PayPal. You know, people can pay with credit cards. Um, you can also log in to pay uh, with PayPal and also do credit card through that so it's kind of strange but um, what I found online is 2.5% uh, plus 30 cents so it, it's basically mimicking PayPal but there's 0.4% less 
Um, so if, if you do the math here, TCG Player actually takes less of your money um, overall, but then you have to ship the item, and if you have to go pay for shipping, the 25% discount might kick in, and it might be cheaper to sell on eBay. Um, but that is really penny-pinching, and I don't think anyone should really worry about that. Just sell on whatever platform you prefer, um, or whoever's asking the higher price. Uh, because occasionally you can take um, take advantage of the platform arbitrage, um, and you know that that does happen quite often actually. Uh, so lastly, we have Amazon. Amazon is absolutely insane. If you're selling on Amazon, you need to stop and move to either eBay or TCG Player. First of all, I don't think um, the secondhand market Yu-Gi-Oh um, sellers get a lot of traffic. I mean, maybe they do. I I, I looked up what people are selling on there and, and the prices are absolutely crazy and it's because the fees are crazy so Amazon has a 99 cent flat fee for each sale so that all automatically throws uh, dollar cards out the window you can't sell a card for a dollar um, then they'll take 15 percent of the sale price and the shipping doesn't really make sense to me um, I'm not really sure if if Amazon just pays or, or prorates your uh, your shipping or, or subsidizes it in some way but what I had found was 45 cents plus five cents a pound to ship the item um, so but I, I don't really think any of that matters because if you're looking at these first two bullet points 99 cents flat for each sale is, is very steep and then they take 15 percent so they're taking a huge chunk of your money if you're selling on uh, Amazon secondhand stuff um, so we're just gonna look at an example here so um, if you sell an item for $50 for free shipping, um, one thing I want to say is a lot of people um, add the shipping fee, like, you know, $50 plus $3.95 shipping or whatever it is. In the modern era, um, people offer free shipping. Just consider it in your, your final price. Don't put a shipping um, qualifier on there. Just say $50. Or if you want to include shipping, just sell it for $55. It just looks better on you. It's just easier. And I mean, it's just, it just looks nicer to say free shipping. Um, you know, that uh, psychological um, impact it has on the, the buyer. It, it does exist. So, so let's say we have, um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot one thing before I go into this. So these, these three options that we have here are, ve are the basic level stuff I know some people in the comments um, if you're a big seller on TCG player on eBay you're aware of like their store subscriptions or being a pro seller or different seller levels so those um, can get pretty complicated basically you pay a flat fee to um, either eBay or TCG player and you're able to sell um, more items and have um, have them take less fees obviously you're selling more with them so they'll give you a discount and we're not going to talk about any of that we're just talking about you know if you made an account today what you'd have to do so uh, fifty dollars an item sold um, you know pr pretty self-explanatory we'll just take these uh, percentages and see see what it looks like here yeah e for eBay they're gonna take uh, five dollars they're gonna take dollar seventy five in PayPal fees and 536 for shipping so I um I was a little bit biased here and what I chose I don't really know I probably shouldn't have done this but I, I just chose like a flat rate envelope you know you go to uh usps and just ship it in a, one of those flat rate boxes or envelopes and it's like seven dollars and fifteen cents uh you don't always have to do that you just buy a bubble mailer and um throw it in there and it'll be like three dollars so this example here is a little bit off um but you know um y you get the idea so basically what you're looking at you're looking at a net profit of 37 dollars basically you lose anywhere from let's say 24 uh, TCG player is probably going to be a little bit less if you just go the um, bubble mailer and just regular tracking. It's like three dollars and sixty-five cents or something like that. So you're looking at maybe twenty-four to twenty-six percent in that range. And Amazon's over here taking thirty-one uh, and at thirty-one point four. That's just wild. You know, that's that's a massive difference here. Um, so as a reseller, we're going to talk about what this means to you. So if, if you bought, as an example, if you bought all your items at 50% of the market and you would just flip them, you'd profit 25%. So if you bought everything at half price, got it in the mail, and sold it the next day for 
double the price, which think about how often that happens to you, probably pretty infrequently, you're gonna get 25.8% profit. Now that's pretty good if you buy a card and you sell it the next day. I mean, that's an, an awesome returns um, um, on your investment there. But, but generally, you should expect 10 to 15%, right? Um, so what that also means, if you're trying to sell your collection to, say, me, you should sell your collection to me always. Um, you shouldn't really uh, demand that much. You know, you shouldn't go in with this mindset that, oh, he's trying to, you know, make a whole bunch of money off me, blah, blah, blah. You got to understand that if I bought it at half price, which is, I mean, probably not going to happen, right? It, it's very rare that you're going to buy a collection or cards at half price. It happens, but it's infrequent. Um, if, you, if you're buying at like 60 or 70%, you know, then you're looking at like 10% returns. And, you know, that's, that's not great. And you got to think about the time it takes to research the price of the card, you know, take a picture if you have to, create the listing, ship the item. 10% is really not a lot of money for all that work. Now, um, I do it often. I'll take that, you know, 10 to 15% on returns. And, you know, it's not really about the returns for me. You know, as long as I'm not going um, negative and I'm getting a little bit something back, it's okay because it's it's a hobby to me. I really enjoy doing it. It's, it's fun to... to buy people's collections i mean we've seen um on this channel that i've opened these collections and they're often like organized in a way or you know have notes on them or something it's just cool to see old people's collection and often it sucks to break them up but you know that's just the way things go um so really you should consider um as a as a buyer um remember that your profit margins um because you don't want to be overpaying for a collection um, especially if you're trying to resell most of it and, and keep some stuff. And as a as a seller, understand all the amount the work that it takes to list the item. Sometimes you're gonna have fraud. Sometimes you're gonna have people claiming that they didn't get their item if you just slapped a stamp on it. You gotta factor that in there too. You know, people claiming they didn't get their stuff. I mean, it's just a hassle. It's it's a lot of work, and a lot of people don't want to deal with it, which is why they should be okay selling for much less than what the cards are worth because it takes time to audit to you know to create the listing and, and to go through the sales and anyone who's who's done that bought a collection and sold their stuff understands it, it's a lot of work but in my, in my opinion it's fun and i enjoy doing it so um it's definitely one of my hobbies and i don't really find it work if i don't want to do it this week if i don't want to list anything or sell anything this week well then that that's fine you know i don't have to do that so um Obviously, I wanted to make this point. Buying off platform is always the best. If you can buy a collection and um, you know go to your locals and and sell it for cash, dude, you're doing great. You know, then you can buy a collection for like you know ten percent uh, less. Like you know, buy it at nine 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 cents on the dollar or something crazy like that, and go to your locals and sell it, and you, you might make a hundred bucks or something like that. And if it, again, if it's enjoy, something you enjoy doing and you, you do it long enough, you know that that money adds up. So, um, if you sell on like uh, online through Instagram, Facebook, or Reddit or something like that, people often use uh, goods and services. At least I do. Um, maybe if, if you want me to make a video on how to go through these transactions off platform, off eBay, you know, through Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit safely, let me know. I can I can definitely uh, make a video on how to do all that without getting uh, scammed because um, it's easy to get scammed but there's some very um, easy uh, measures in place that can prevent scamming from happening so um, uh, all you have to pay is the, the PayPal fee um, sometimes you don't have to pay that PayPal fee depends on what method of PayPal you use but generally you're looking at like three percent plus the the flat fee of 30 cents to PayPal so it'll net you 94 to 97 percent still a m really good really good net a lot of people sell this way and um you know it's uh it's it's easy to do well uh, it's not easy to do it, it it takes a lot of skill and time and and effort and patience you know you're, you're you don't have the protection of ebay behind you you know you just kind of have to hope everything goes well and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't um 
Right. So this is the thing I wanted to talk about. You know, if if you're doing this locally, it's great. But if you want to scale and kind of, you know, maybe you want to devote some more time into this. Maybe you've made two thousand dollars this month, and, and you're like, wow, this is actually great. Um, you know, I want to put more time and effort into this. Maybe this can become a full time thing, and and it's possible that it will. But I'll just tell you, you shouldn't get your hopes up because it sucks doing. Um, it, it when it becomes too much, it really does feel like it's it's work. And maybe maybe that's what you want to do. And if it is, you know, go for it. D do what you want. You know, do what you make makes you happy. But it, it is a lot of work, and you need to consider that. So. Um, in order to scale though you do have to use a platform you need a website or you need to go on eBay and create a store or TCG player and create a store just so you can have more people viewing your items and that's essentially what TCG player and eBay are doing is is you're paying the fees you're paying is to advertise your items is to get that viewership on your items so people can see your stuff and buy it that's what you're that's what the fees you're paying for that's all you're paying for um, Oh yeah, this was I was going to talk about store subscriptions. That's another video. Um, I've already gone 15, 16 minutes into this video, so I'm sure nobody's watching this far. But you know, um, if you are, I appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you consider becoming a reseller. Um, it's fun. It, it's very lucrative at times, and um, you know, you can uh, definitely build your collection very nicely. So uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Uh, if you made it this far, let me know. That'd be cool. Um, but Thanks, guys. See you next time.